FOMO as pertaining to children, raising children. FOMO is usually fear of missing out, as in you have an experience you don't want to miss out on, like a hot air balloon trip, you know, uh, something on your bucket list. You're in here, in this place, and they have this once in 10 years festival. You gotta go. Or there are concert tickets to see, blah, blah, blah. Maybe they're gonna retire soon, or you don't know what's gonna happen. You gotta spend that thousand dollars on getting those tickets, right? Fear of missing out. I think for parents, oftentimes, it's fear of missing out on something that may be harming your kid, may be dangerous, may cause issues down the road that you don't know about right now. Let me start with some concrete examples. So, I have a daughter and she has constipation issues, which are apparently not uncommon in children. She cries though, she could wake up crying, which is unusual, per reports I'm reading on the internet. And she's not gaining weight well. Is there something wrong with her gut? I mean, the pediatricians may think so, may not, but could it be that she has some rare condition and we're gonna miss on it and it's just gonna get worse in the future and we're in which we treat it earlier? The problem is it's so hard to do investigation in kids. And you worry about traumatizing them for no good reason, right? I mean, you can't even get blood draws easily, right? You have to hold them down, their veins are so tiny, blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, there's a low, low chance that there's something wrong. There's a high, high chance there's nothing wrong. How do you have the wisdom to distinguish between the two? There's also the fear of missing out, right? Later in life, by listening to people, right? You think your son is very talented. He's gonna be a great baseball player. Right now, it's not doing so hot, but you know, maybe it's just the coach. Five out of six coaches would say he's horrible, has no chance, but, but, but there could be that one out of six who says, you know, he just needs some more time, but he has real potential. You have fear of missing out that your child could be good at this, could be good at that, but just needs some more opportunities. The right setting. You don't want to give up so quickly, so easily. That's also a fear, right? You fear you're missing out on this, this small straw of an opportunity, but it's still there, right? I mean, the teacher didn't write him off completely, just, just mostly, but they could be wrong. There's always a possibility, right? When we deal with children, it's very different than dealing with ourselves, right? It's much easier dealing with probability in ourselves, right? The probability of me becoming present is so low, I'm not even bothered to think about it, right? The probability of this or that, right? My chance of doing this, my chance of doing that, right? I mean, most people are somewhat realistic. Even if they're not, they're still relatively realistic. But when it comes to children, it's different because of two things. One is that I think many people are very hopefully optimistic about their children. It's hard to come to grips with reality that your child's not the cutest, child's not the smartest, your child's not this or that, right? Many people will look at their children with overly rosy prospects. The second thing is, they don't get to make decisions, right? Especially when they're little. They don't really have much of a say. What does your 10-month-old have a say in? She can't talk. She cannot really express herself. She cannot respond when you ask her, do you want this or do you want that, right? So you have to decide what's best for them. And you don't want to miss something, right? For yourself, you may say, yeah, you know, I've been to 10 doctors. They say, I'm fine. I'm, I'm just going to have to accept that. But for your kid, maybe you'll go to 11 doctors, 12. How do you draw the line and how hard you try? I mean, many people try harder for their kids than for themselves, right? And I think the fear of missing out is very difficult to deal with, with your kids, right? Because you'll be forever apologetic if you cause them harm. I mean, you didn't mean to, but is that the same as you didn't cause them harm? I mean, it's one thing when, you know, your doctor doesn't diagnose you with cancer for five, ten years. But another thing when you, as a parent, didn't go to another doctor and your kid wasn't diagnosed for cancer with five to ten years. I mean, it feels different. 
You feel worse for them than you do yourself, right? You wish you could suffer in their place, even though you can't. And so you'll work extra hard. But does that mean probability is different than them? I mean, we do understand that the consequences are higher in your kids than for yourself. But how do you deal with the fact that there's these people, littler, true, who cannot speak for themselves, cannot decide for themselves, cannot help themselves many times. And you have this obligation of taking care of them well. I'm not saying to the best of your ability, I'm saying well, right? I mean, if you say to the best of your ability, some people just give up. They're like, oh, I've tried hard enough. But if you're one of those parents who wants to take care of their kids well, where do you draw the line and saying, I've done enough, I can't do anymore, right? When do you say, I'm sure they're not missing anything. There's nothing truly wrong with my daughter's intestines. Versus saying, okay, I gotta see another doctor. I gotta see a pediatric GI specialist for constipation when most kids have constipation issues. It's difficult. And I don't have an answer to that. But I think it's the same with spoiling your kids. There comes a point in life, you're gonna have to take this choice and saying, I may be missing something. My daughter could be crying for a good reason, but I'm gonna train her. I'm not gonna tend to her right away. I'll tend to her later, but she's gonna to have to learn to stop crying, to console herself to a certain extent. You will miss stuff. My friend was really sad and this one keeps reminding her. Her son was bawling. He cries normally, this time a little bit more, whatever. And she realized he had his foot stuck between the barriers of the crib. She felt really bad. I mean, he eventually stopped crying by himself because they get tired. But she missed it. But is he scarred for life? I don't think so. And the training he's gotten from all the times of learning to take care of himself and crying? I think he's going to be a more independent kid when he grows up. And a better adjusted adult. I decide whether that's worth the risk that you're missing something. And I think if we look at it, what do we want them to do in life? To be worry words? Stuff may be missed, but it's okay. Life goes on, you make the best of it. And that's what we want to teach our kids also. And the first step teaching is us, by our actions, by our choices for them, by doing it ourselves.